Bethesda plans to release The Pit Expeditions in 2022, and even though there is no fixed release date yet, there is a lot of new details that came to light with Update 33. Hello, hello everyone, welcome back to another Fallout 76 video. In this one, I'm going to show you all the latest details on the upcoming Expedition system, also known as the Pit. Now, this sort of major feature was announced last summer in June 2020, but has even released a small cinematic trailer, but ever since we haven't heard anything at all. Well, at least not officially, but thankfully the data mining community is very active for 76, so we get the privilege to access the spicy details way ahead of time. Anyway, I have already unveiled some features for the pit in this other video, but now there's a lot more info and updates with the latest patch 33. So here I am compiling the latest discoveries just for you guys. It may or may not include fuel, vertibirds, a new faction, new enemies, and so much more. <laughs> Keep in mind that what you are about to see is subject to change. Data miners can only read the existing files, but since the system is being developed and it's not in a very advanced state yet, anything discovered could change, it could stay as it is, or it could even cease to exist. It's incognito right now. As such, we should focus on the present and on what we know right now. So hold on tight and let's explore the latest 20 things we know about the expedition system so far in 2022. Despite adding timestamps, I recommend you guys watching everything without skipping because I actually organize the points by a logic sequence, which means if you miss a certain point, you might feel a little bit lost later on, just a little bit. Anyway, with that being said, I think it's clear for everyone at this point that the pit will be a highly radioactive area. Period. Despite not being directly hit by the atomic bombs, the radioactive rivers contaminated the entire area, altering it forever. Now, in Fallout 3, the pit was already a rat's paradise, it even originated unique mutations, so imagine the levels of radiation about 200 years back. Yeah, the timeline between Fallout 3 and 76 is over 150 years. I think it will be like walking in a permanent nuked area or something very close to it. Anyway, I discovered some interesting files attached to expeditions, all related to radiation exposure, even for defenses too, as you can see, which probably means Bethesda has been adjusting the numbers, but if you need more proof, here it is. Let's go back to the official trailer, where the radiation detector sounds go ballistic, clearly indicating the pit contains deadly levels of rads. If this gets confirmed, then players will need proper equipment to survive the harsh conditions. But perhaps players won't have to be out in the open all the time for their expeditions. Underground facilities and bunkers would certainly reduce the exposure, so maybe survival won't be as difficult as it first appears. Only time will tell. Now, considering the lethal levels of radiation here, it's sort of expected to come across all sorts of mutated creatures during expeditions. And according to the latest data, it seems like a particular one is making a return from Fallout 3. I'm talking about trogs, of course, resulting from a TDC, standing for troglodyte degeneration contagion. It basically mutates humans into this monster, half wendigo with frog hands and feet. Creepy, just creepy. Obviously, I'm not just assuming trogs will return based on the radiation level of the pit. It's also because data miners discovered a new folder and files named as trog attached to expeditions. This doesn't necessarily mean trogs from Fall 3 will return exactly as they were. Perhaps they will look different. They should actually, if they indeed return, they would be a much earlier version of the mutation, right? So it would make sense. Remember, 76 timeline is about 
200 years apart, so yeah, a lot of things change in two centuries. But that's not the only possibility. It could be that Bethesda is simply using the truck model to create a new enemy, for example, like a boss, or even to use it for some new items like mounted heads or even the green tubes with preserved creatures inside. 76 has lots of them, so there is a high chance it could happen in this case. Anyway, let's proceed. So far we have plenty of info on the expedition system, as in the missions. Not so much about what will they be about, but on the way the system will work. First of all, we know players will be able to access and choose their expeditions, as the screen's title suggests. As shown, there are other possible options there, such as the expedition location, district, level and contact person. These could very well be variables, but I don't think so. For example, changing an expedition level sounds really unbalanced. I think they are just descriptive fields, which obviously should change depending on the expedition you end up choosing. These fields most likely mean that different expeditions will take you to different districts and the difficulty levels won't be the same every single time. I also think there will be multiple contact persons, otherwise there would be no use for such fields, right? If every expedition featured the same exact details here, it wouldn't make sense to have them there. Anyway, with this district field in mind, it would be sensible to bring back the old pit map. It's not like the city would drastically change anyway. I guess there would be less ruins and less fresh outposts in contrast with Fallout 3, but it's not like the main traits of the city like roads, buildings, monuments and so on would simply disappear. They have to be there. Maybe Bethesda won't bring the entire map back just yet, but I do believe they will feature several main spots in the pit like we saw in Fallout 3. Also, if I had to guess where is the industrial district featured in the loading screen, I would say around the power plant right there. So hopefully at least the northwest of the pit will make it into 76. Talking about returning things, there is one huge element that will certainly come back and that's the Pittsburgh Bridge. Even without the evidence, this one would be obvious. The bridge is still there after some 200 years in Fallout 3, so obviously it would be there in the past too, it has to be. Besides common sense, we have solid proof that Bethesda plans to include the pit bridge in expeditions as data miners digged this very familiar icon. Does it ring a bell? Hmm? It should if you played Fallout 3, because this new icon is a variant of the existing icon for the Into the Pit trophy for Fallout 3. It's the exact same icon actually, it's just now Bethesda adapted it to 76, they updated the vault number from 101 to 76, they did some color correction and some other minor adjustments, like making the bridge a bit larger. The same icon was also discovered with this sort of border, which could indicate it will be a map icon of some sorts. It even has a direction arrow, which makes me think it will be an add-on for the friends list or for team play. It's too early to tell, but these two are probably the best bets. Okay, now let's move on to some more exciting stuff, the expedition missions. According to the 76 data mining community, the pit journey will start with a tutorial phase. In other words, the first expedition will be like an introduction to the system, consisting of two to three objectives. We will get there with more details in the next point. Also, one of the first contacts players will have with expeditions is an add-on with a small text saying, the time has come to expand the rebuilding of America outside of Appalachia. We've received reports of survivors in other cities, they need our help. Now this is obviously a huge, huge statement because first, it implies we can build outside of Appalachia, the main map right now. It also implies we can help other survivors, which could belong to different factions. And lastly, they mention survivors in other cities, not city, but cities, which is indirectly telling us that the pit is only the beginning. It's one city out of many, hopefully. In the last point, I mentioned that the first expedition will feature a few objectives, 
and we do have some more concrete data. During this sort of tutorial expedition, players will have to scavenge fuel from power plants, still in Appalachia. It's not clear if any power plant will work, at least one will, as shown in the image. The Monoga power plant seems to be eligible for this objective. I actually went there and explored the power plant and there's tons of barrels around. They have been there all along. So in theory, Bethesda just needs to add an interaction button for some of these barrels and players can easily loot fuel. I mean, I don't know if these barrels contain fuel, of course, they could contain other things, industrial residues, uranium or something else, but considering the latest details here, I would definitely bet on the fuel. Anyway, if you are wondering why do we have to loot fuel, you probably guessed right already. It's for transportation, it's our ticket into the pit, it seems like. Alright, so you gather lots of fuel and then what? Right now it's presumed it will be for flying a vertibird. But as most details in this video, it's not set in stone. According to the data miners, the vertibird is the most sensible option. I believe they also discovered some ties attached to expeditions. Now in theory, any land vehicle could be suitable for traveling, or maybe not. I mean, considering most roads in Appalachia are damaged or in ruins, plus all the vehicles blocking passage... yeah... Also, let's not forget that the trip is not so close. From West Virginia to Pittsburgh without any unexpected events or interruptions, it takes over 3 hours according to Google. Yeah, it's really not that close, is it? I don't think a land vehicle would be a wise or safe choice in any case. There are just too many things that could go wrong and nope, better not risk it. In contrast, flying to the pit would be ideal, it would be much faster, safer, convenient and much much cooler, especially if players would get to fly them if we could access and pilot one. I'm afraid that's not going to happen though, it will probably be like the Fallout 4 Far Harbor DLC, where players have to interact with the boat in order to access a new area. I believe Bethesda will do the same thing they did with the system, replacing the boat with a vertibird, of course. This next point is about something I actually considered as part of my previous Expeditions video. I really thought the Brotherhood of Steel would be behind Expeditions. I mean, who else would send us into a long distance mission? Moreover, there was a dead body wearing a variation of the Brotherhood Special Ops outfit in the official trailer. So I just put the pieces together a little bit, but turns out I was wrong, it went the opposite way and that's totally fine. Actually, I'm glad it did. I think we had enough of the Brotherhood for the time being. Plus, Bethesda said that the Steel Rain DLC came to conclude their chapter. I couldn't find the original post anymore, but many other gaming media covered it at the time as shown. It seems like Bethesda is sticking to their plan, they are staying faithful. After all, the pit will introduce us to a new faction and new NPCs too. This next fact is a rather difficult topic since we barely know anything. The pit will introduce us to the Union, but who are they exactly? Well, wouldn't you like to know? The data mine banner only mentions they got in touch with the responders in Appalachia and they are in need of assistance. Other than that, we are pretty much in the dark. But there are a few assumptions we could make. First of all, they are most likely not hostile. I doubt raiders would ask strangers to save their butts over the responders' comms on top of all. Plus, in the Fallout lore, there is a faction called Union already. In fact, the settlers' leader in Appalachia, Paige, used to work for the construction's Union pre-war. If it's the same faction, then we can surely have an idea of what to expect. There will be friendly folks, similar to the settlers, highly focused on building and surviving. But only time will tell if we are on the right path or not really. So far, we only know about one new NPC coming with the Pit DLC. I'm sure there will be many more in the future, but for now, that's all we have. Her name is Hex and she will be our first contact with the Expeditions and possibly the Union faction as well. Her name appears in different files, such as Expeditions menu and some other files too. She has several placeholder assets as shown 
It seems like she will have her own blue hologram just like we have for Dodge in Daily Ops for example. The files also label her as female, that's how we know her gender. Anyhow, the character development for the pit seems to be in a very early stage, so hopefully we will find more about this NPC in the following months. Now, what about the responders? In the expedition selection menu, it does mention that Union got in touch with the responders, but how exactly? We mostly have robots and automatic systems left behind in Appalachia. There's barely any human responders here, so it's difficult to believe the bots have filtered the contact and addressed it properly. Uh, yeah, I, I have a really hard time believing that's what's going to happen. It's possible, yes, but I think it would be more realistic to add a small group of responders, human responders. After all, it's a DLC and if the background story doesn't connect, if the foundation is not very well done, then everything else will crumble. Or in this case, it will make very little sense and draw players away, pretty much. I think it's time for Appalachia to get some real paramedics and firemen, now that we have proper settlements and everything. Let's keep our fingers crossed, maybe it will happen. Let's talk about rewards next. Obviously, expeditions will have their own rewards, but it's too early to know what exactly. I mean, there are hardly any missions or NPCs yet, let alone rewards. However, the data miners discovered this new rewards screen, similar to the daily ops template, a bit more simple, <coughs> saying expeditions complete. If I had to guess, I would say Bethesda will add another unique rewards list featuring new rewards attached to regular currencies and goodies, similar to what we have in daily ops and special events, but hopefully a little bit better. Despite knowing very little about the contents of the upcoming expeditions, there's quite a few options we learned about already. For instance, data miners discovered the pause and resume option in the new expedition files, which highly suggests these missions will be longer than the typical activities we had so far. It also implies time limits, that's right. Probably similar to events, it's the only scenario where a pause resume system would make sense. Normally you don't need to pause anything, you just leave a mission where it is and return the next time. So I think expeditions will be time-based like daily ops or events, except now you will have some control over the timing. Another option discovered is related to multiple objectives per expedition. Currently, expeditions look like complex quest lines. It's like several missions all packed up together, which honestly explains the previous point. With so much to do, it makes sense to be able to pause your progress and resume another time, another day, another play session, as you prefer. I just hope these objectives won't be fill ones, you know, random tasks just to burn time and create the illusion, expeditions are long and complex and meaningful experiences, when in reality there is hardly any sense or logic behind the requests. I hope that's not the case. Against all expectations, I think it's safe to say that the pit is not a map expansion. It might look like one at first glance, but nope, it's nothing alike. It doesn't work like the normal map we have. It's not even an open world area. In fact, the pit areas seem to be attached to the respective expeditions, which means you can only access certain locations if the chosen expedition sends you there for an objective. Otherwise, I'm afraid you cannot go there or to the given locations you want to go. As the data miner said, expeditions are mission-based, it's not a new world space. They are restricted cells dependent on your expedition choice. I really hope we are all wrong here. Open world and exploration are some of the best parts of 76. It would be such a pity if they add all this new content in space and then it's all locked away behind rules and more rules and restrictions. If you are wondering how often can you do an expedition, I might have the answer you are looking for. According to the latest findings, it seems like players are limited to one single expedition per week, which might be another reason for disappointment if it stays that way. So far, it does seem like each expedition will be 
relatively long, but how long exactly, we don't know. I don't want to jump into conclusions yet, especially because nothing is definite yet. But one expedition per week, even if it lasts two or three hours, it sounds way too little for a weekly activity, especially if it comes with rare and unique rewards. Can you imagine once per week you get rewards once per week? With the loot lists we normally have, it would take many, many months to unlock all the stuff. Um, yeah, let's keep moving. Something else we know about expeditions is that it will receive a bunch of new icons. It's not for sure yet though, but as the tends to create or import such icons, but then they rarely end up using them for whatever reason. The game files have so many unused icons, it's weird and crazy. Anyway, these new icons could be indicators of objectives or points of interest in the pit, like a power station, a hospital slash clinic, a metro station, a bank, a highly toxic area, and so on. These new items seem to be all attached to expeditions, but they might never see the light of the day. Don't get me wrong, I hope they do and I hope they will bring some sort of map dynamic, but if they don't, don't be too shocked. We are almost at the end here, but before we finish, I have a few more facts for you. It appears that the expedition system is or might be progressive. First we learned there are difficulty levels, then we also learned there are different objectives and accessible locations depend on the expedition of your choice, which really makes me think the entire system will be progressive. After the tutorial, there will be most likely quests for each new area to unlock them first, and I also think expeditions will become progressively more difficult. That would be interesting though. The more you complete them, the harder it gets and the better rewards you can get, with some sort of limits, of course. What do you think, though? I think it would be a pretty nice concept, actually. Well, this next point surely got me excited. Data miners discover that the White Spring is connected to the expedition system. It will work like some sort of hub where players can gather and fast travel to their chosen expedition from there. Maybe the Verti Birds will land on the roof? Hmm, could be. Either way, there's plenty of free space inside of the wet spring, outside too. Just look at all these empty locked rooms, which could perfectly be developed because they are not. If you use photo mode, it's completely empty. It's empty space, there's nothing there. The fourth floor is also not accessible to players, so that's another option. Bethesda could simply build it for this purpose. And probably the best one, it's even closer to the roof. Lastly, Bethesda could also build a secret door somewhere to unlock a new area, similar to the bunker entrance we already have for the White Springs Enclave Bunker. Other option would be fine, honestly, as long as they give this centerpiece in Appalachia a new purpose. I'm all in. Just do it. Lastly, I bet you are wondering if you can co-op for expeditions, and the answer is yes, yes, and yes. You will be able to join your friends and assist them with their new journeys. According to the data miners, there will be a widget which tells you if a friend is currently doing an expedition and what stage are they at? Well, that sounds super useful. As obvious, friends can also choose to give you some expedition assistance if they wish to do so. I just don't think the progress will carry on for them when they join you. It will most likely work like the existing missions, where the team leader makes all the decisions and so on. Well, at least there is a choice, solo or co-op. So that's definitely good news. Now let's talk about the big question. When is the 76 pit coming? When can you play expeditions? So far Bethesda has been dead silent about the entire matter. In fact, we don't even have a content roadmap for 2022 yet. So it's really hard to tell. But judging by the early stages of development here and lack of official information, I would aim for Q4, the end of the year, really. Moreover, Bethesda often delays new major features, so if you aim that far, 
your chances to get disappointed later will be much, much inferior. If it comes sooner, great, amazing, fantastic. But if it doesn't, oh well, at least it won't come as a surprise anymore. Anyway, I think the foundation is decent so far. I would definitely change a few things if I could, if it was up to me, such as making the pit a true map expansion with open world features. I would also not limit it to one time per week, that's a no-no. And I would definitely bring back human responders to the wasteland. But that's enough opinion from my end, the video is long enough. I hope you enjoyed, that's everything we know about expeditions until this point. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them below, I often answer, so if I know how to address it, I will surely let you know. I also want to leave a special thanks to the 76 data mining community, who retrieved so much useful information, without them this video wouldn't be possible. Now it's time to wrap things up, consider leaving a like and subscribe to help my channel out, and thanks for watching of course. I am Marta Branco and I will see you all very very soon in the next one. Until then. Take care, adios, bye bye!